Hello everybody, today I'm going to be responding to a suggested video that I got. This came from Tumblr and I am going to talk today about Morning Musume's Colorful Character Concert. Alright, so the Colorful Character Concert is meant to honor 15 years of Morning Musume and really celebrate the anniversary of it. And I think overall as a whole, this concert did not do that. But overall, I feel like it was not a general success. We begin the concert with one, two, three. This is one of those songs that I don't think that I'll ever like live just because I've heard it so many times and it's just never really been performed wonderfully any time that I've ever heard it. When they sing live, they generally do not auto-tune this song and I feel like the auto-tune is really what makes it and the disconjointedness of the whole song where there's like a line here from a girl, then a line here from two, and then a line here from two, and then a line back from one. It's just really awkward and out of place. That being said, all of the girls' vocals, with the exception of one or two or three, really sounded fantastic. This lineup is really weird to me. Either they have really great vocals and really bad energy, or they have really, really great energy and horrible vocals. And I feel like in this situation, the first scenario happened. Their stamina and their vocals were fantastic. They did a really great job, but I feel like they just had no energy and they looked like they could not be more bothered to be there. P.S. I still freaking hate Kimi wa Kawawi. That is the dumbest line in this entire freaking song, and I don't know if Sunku wrote that or if Riho ad-libbed it, but it still pisses me off, because it sounds stupid. The Matt and Rose show was next. Raina sounded wonderful with very little effort. It's nice to hear her natural singing voice as opposed to Nasal Naka Raina. Her high notes were so pretty and so fantastic, but again, I feel like they just looked so put out. But you know what? I really don't blame them because if I were in their situation, I would be pissed off that I didn't ever get any solo lines, and I wouldn't really want to be there either. Yes. The Dixie Cup hat and colorful trash bag costumes were cute and they kind of looked like dancing wrapped candies, but I feel like they looked a little bit trashy. Pun intended. Next up in the lineup was What's Up. I was really, really hoping that I could get into this song because it was kind of on my higher part of my list from the Colorful Character album, but I just feel like live it did not really please me so much. I think that Misaki and Ayumi sounded unbelievably wonderful in this particular song, and I think Ayumi just as on a whole throughout the entire concert sounded really great. What I think you was next? Maybe the girls were just really low energy in the first couple of songs because maybe they really had to like fart or poop or something because when they came back from the BTR break, they had so much energy and so much presence and they really put themselves out there and it was nice to see that after mediocre first three performances. Mizuki was amazing and I think that Aerie sounded fantastic too. I used to think that Aerie was a really bad singer because anytime that I heard anything from her, her voice was trembly and it was not very strong and she couldn't really hold any notes but after hearing the Nigaki Risa fan club tour that she did and hearing her sing all of those old songs I realized that Aerie has a really great voice she just doesn't get used enough and I feel like this particular song was very flattering for her voice and I think that she sounded the best out of everybody next to Canon who that freaking solo line that came out of nowhere where she was just like singing straight out of heaven's voice and it was beautiful and it pisses me off that Sunku is so stupid that he doesn't give her more lines because she clearly has so much talent. The only reason why she doesn't get anything is because she's a little bit curvier and it sucks because unlike past curvy girls that we had in Morning Musume who couldn't really sing that fantastically, Canon sings amazing and she doesn't get anything. And it makes me so upset when she sings a line like this and proves that she could probably out-sing half the girls in this group right now and she doesn't get anything for it. That makes me really upset and I really just can't blame her for the last several singles not having any presence or energy in the music videos because I would lose it too if I knew that I could sing better than the lead vocalist and I wasn't getting anything and it was only because I was being discriminated against because of my weight. I would be pissed, as I am right now. 
Watashi no Jidai was next, and this was just kind of an underwhelming song. I couldn't really finish it because it was just so boring. I feel like the girls were trying really hard. Sayumi's energy was way more there than Reina's, but I feel like having everybody else on stage really cluttered it, and it didn't really give anything special to the song. Chikyu ga Naiteru is next. This song had so much potential, but I am just getting so tired of hearing Reina and Riho's voice. Mostly Riho, because I know that Reina's on her way out, and so I can withstand her voice for a little bit longer, but I'm getting so tired of Riho's voice. I will say this about her, though. Her voice does not sound like a cheese grater on my eardrums 50% of the time anymore. She just has no real energy in her singing and there's not really any presence. She doesn't really do anything with the lines that she's given. She kind of just sings them as Sungu shows her how to do it. And so I think I'm just kind of bored with how she presents it. Unlike other girls who, when they get lines, they try to do something with it in the lives as opposed to what they did in the albums or on the singles or on the B-sides. Riho really just sings the exact same way that she's saying in the studio recording and doesn't do anything with it in the live and I think that's why I just get so bored with her voice and hearing it again and again and again and again and again because there's nothing special to it and she doesn't try to bring it to new places and really challenge herself. Granted, her voice would probably explode if she tried to challenge herself. But that is beyond the point. Next is Bravo. This is one of those songs that I really wish was retired and I think I'm just emotionally upset over it any time that I see it because I never got to hear it live with Ari Linlin and Jun Jun. And I think that this is one of those songs that just shouldn't really be played again, but I think it worked for this venue and I think it worked as far as energy and the mood is concerned for the most part. I saw that Tetai no Ni was next. This is the ninth generation B-side for one, two, three, and this is one of those songs that I really just am not a huge fan of. I like the live version of it, but I just couldn't get past the tacky dance and the tacky costumes. Mizuki was beautiful, but she looked like she stole a prototype dress from Joshikoshi Mashimonogatari. With those MC Hammer pants that she had, she was looking a little bit tacky next to all the girls who were like kind of overdone up and looked pretty and she was in just those big clunky pants and she just stood out in kind of a bad way. Ari had the exact same unfortunate problem. She looked beautiful. She looked a little bit like she popped out of a Tampopo music video, but she was so pretty, but she stuck out like an awkward sore thumb because that big giant sundress that looked like she came out of Little House on the Prairie just didn't work for me. Riho's dress looked a little bit like they repurposed parts from Kimu Goda Princess, and while it was pretty, it again just it stood out in kind of a weird way that it, it didn't look particularly nice. I can tell that they're definitely sexing her up though and really trying to push that sex image out because that's really what I got from the costume the whole time. For once, Canon was dressed perfectly. I feel like she was the only one out of the 9th gen in this particular performance that really looked fantastic and suited well. She looked like a combination of every single Morning Musume music video and concert performance that has ever been done squished into one nice clutter-free costume that was just pretty and it didn't look like it was trying to be more than what it was. It was really just very nice to look at. For the context of this concert, considering that it's a 15-year anniversary special, I feel like these concert costumes were a really cute, fun idea, but I think that they were misplaced, and I think that they would have been better off in the medley, and I will explain that a little bit later, and I think that maybe the medley costumes would have been better for this, and I think that maybe the dance should have been taken down a little bit, because it was a little bit too, hey, come do me right now on this stage, and I was like, not feeling that. Not feeling it, Haas. Seishun Domanaka is the 10th generation B side for 123, and this is by far my favorite 123 B side because it's just very fun, it's very sweet. We talked about it before in our MMJJ that this is one of those songs that really is age appropriate. I loved the live of it, I think the girls sounded fantastic. I think that those 50s Sunday morning church dresses were very cute, but I think that if they would have replaced the skirt with maybe a schoolgirl skirt, that it would have worked better for the context of the song but I still think it was cute and I, I still think that it was a fun idea and I don't necessarily hate it, I just think that it could have been a little bit better. But I really don't have many complaints about the vocals of the song because the girls really put themselves into the story and they really presented it well. Namida Hitoshi Zuku is next and this was led by Reina. Reina definitely decided to put on her idol voice before she left and jumped on stage and I just really couldn't get through the whole thing because it just kind of bored me the whole time. I'm sorry Reina. Sorry Reina fans. 
bored me. La 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 no PPP -pee -pee is next. Sayumi, stop being so freaking cute. I demand that you stop. This was a really fun song to lift the mood after Reina's solo. A bit out of place, but still fun. Her little tiara and the rabbits dancing with her was so freaking precious. And I just want to put her in a little box and carry her around with me all the time. Because she's so freaking cute. Karato Yoshini ga omise takashitai is next in the set list. And I never thought that this song could be sung with such low energy and such boredom but somehow, that managed to happen. Reina's lack of emotion and connectivity to the song really just pulled me out of it and really bored me the whole time. And I really wish that the Aigaki and Aika lines had been divided up between Mizuki, Eri, and Canon because that 10th gen duet thing didn't really work for me. Next is Daiteyo, Please Go On. I will be open and honest that I am not a huge fan of Goto's music, but I am glad that they found a way to incorporate her and to really honor her service in Morning Musume by including this song, and I think that Reina did a good job with it. I'm just not a huge fan of Goto's music. Let's talk about the medley for a minute. This is one of Sunku's best, in my opinion, medleys since Single Dice and Shoe, because for the most part with Sunku's medleys, he takes a song and like cuts it at the minute and a half mark and then pastes it next to another song which he's cut in half and then paste that all next to like a 30 second clip from another song and does that throughout the entire medley until he has like a nine minute chunk of like 10 or 15 songs all bunched together that's literally like one jump cut, one jump cut, one jump cut. It just never sounds good. But this one, he totally rearranged the instruments to most of these songs to really sound a little more techno poppy and he mixed them all so that they flowed into each other. The part where it merged from Kimogo to Princess to Fantasy Ga Hajimaru and I heard that Sayu me singing that line just gave me chills and I'm getting chills thinking about it because it sounded so cool. The unfortunate thing is that Sunku shot this medley straight in the foot and in the kneecaps, both of them, with those huge freaking dresses that the girls could not move in in very heavily dance-oriented songs. That was a very hard sentence to compose, I apologize. And on top of it, he divided all of the solo lines between Reina, Sayumi, and Riho, and a smattering of Mizuki near the very end, and a couple other girls, and for the most part, it made me very upset because we got the entire concert to hear Reina, Sayumi, and Riho. It would be a very nice time during this medley piece to introduce your other vocalists and be like, hey, these girls can sing too, let's hear their voices. But no, we did not do that this time. We decided to continue on our trend of these three girls because they're his favorites and whatever, that's how it goes. And then is my final little bit that made me upset is that he kind of tacked on OK Ya yeah to the very end and really just, in my opinion, gave up and didn't incorporate more songs where he could have easily done a few more. Resident Blue. This song hurt me a little bit. Brace yourselves. Riho is not I. Riho will never be I. Her voice did not sound pleasant in this song whatsoever. And I never ever thought I would say this, but I miss Koharu's voice and I feel like Koharu would have sang this song better than Riho. Forgive me Riho fans, I did not enjoy it. I want to pretend like Renai Hunter didn't happen because this was horrible. Dokan Capriccio and Zero Ga Hajimaru were both very boring songs to me and I really couldn't get through them and it was very hard to listen all the way through. The crowd wasn't even really participating either. There were maybe like two guys who were in the back going like, Woo! It sounded like they pretty much all gave up, that they just knew where the concert was heading and they just weren't even emotionally invested in it. What I will say about Zero though is that I appreciated the differentiation of lines and that we got a little bit of Misaki because it was nice to hear another voice after hearing an entire concert of three main vocalists and big chunky group lines. So it was nice to hear a couple of Misaki solos, though they weren't very big and they didn't last for a long time. Overall it was really unimpressive, kind of like your dad last night. Wako Take a Take a Chance is next. The intro to this song really almost made me cry because it was so emotional to see every song from start to this current time being played in just a very short clip and it was really nice to hear everything and then Wako Teka came on and this is a song that was very hit or miss. It half the time sounded really great and then half the time sounded really unimpressive and really underwhelming and it was a little bit hard to listen to. Then finally we have Be Alive. This was a really weird song to end the concert set list with and while I'm glad that we didn't hear Namidachi again, 
I feel like the final song should really be a chance that you get to showcase all of your vocalists and really tie a nice pretty ribbon around the concert and tell all your fans that you spent your money in the right place. But then again, looking at this whole concert in a big context of boringness, be Alive was a perfect song to tie a very boring bow over a very boring concert in a really boring venue that just could have been better. And I don't blame the girls, I totally blame Sunku, I think it's definitely his fault. This is supposed to be a concert that represents 15 years of Morty Musume being a thing, and Sunku chose songs that really only represented the last couple years of its tenure, and I wish that he would have covered songs from the entire era, kind of like Single Dies and Shoe, but maybe not as intense, and I think that it would have been nice to have heard other songs from other eras and other lineups, and ones that didn't include girls that are in the lineup now. But we kind of strayed from that, and I don't know why that happened, especially since the concert now is really focusing on that, and the previous concert did something very similar to that. And so I think that Sunku's kind of giving up right now as far as trying to reprise old songs when this would be a perfect time to do it and really show that every girl can sing and that they don't necessarily have to sing in autotune, that they can sing in other styles and other genres. And I think that Sunku kind of just lost in that aspect. And again, I don't blame the girls, I blame Sunku. It's his fault that the concert kind of sucked, and it's his fault that the lines were distributed badly, and it's his fault that the songs didn't work together, but I do have to say that the girls just looked like they were so uninterested in the whole thing that they just could not have been more bothered to be there. And I think it's because they know that this is not a great representation of the history of Morning Musume, and I think that they all know that it's not a great showcase for their voices and their talent. And so it was just a little bit upsetting to see this whole concert because it was so overwhelmingly underwhelming. The same problem that I've had with the last several B-sides that Sunku's put out. So once again, Sunku's disappointed me. So I hope I didn't severely offend any of you. I know that I was a little bit harsh and this was not exactly rainbows and unicorn farts, but let me know what your thoughts were on this concert. And I will see you guys all again tomorrow with another video. If you would like me to review something for the future, please let me know. Um, and I'll see you again, again tomorrow. Peace out. Take a mouse. Ooh.